the disciple approached him and said, teach us how to pray. Just like John taught his disciple how to pray. So you see, in every gathering, you don't learn praying or you don't learn how to pray by praying. You learn how to pray by teaching. You don't say, I will learn how to pray by praying. No, you learn how to pray by teaching. So, it's important, please, I don't want distraction, please. It's important that when you come to church like this, yes, we are here to pray, but the utmost important thing is that when it's time for the world, you look away from everything that will distract you and you pay attention to it. One thing I'm thankful to God for is that God has the ability to speak. Just imagine that we have a God that cannot talk. Just picture it a little way. That a God that cannot talk, a God that cannot move, but we don't have a dead God. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. Hallelujah. I have my, I have few minutes to spend here because we, uh, I already planned out. We are stretching ourselves a little bit. We are going higher. But let me tell you something. And it's just because I've seen it in this church, I saw it somewhere else and I felt, and I told the pastor, I said, see, the issue with people is that sometimes when the word of God comes, they they form this uh, brick wall that the word of God cannot penetrate. I have said it and I will say it, say it again. You know, most of the people preaching, maybe on Wednesdays, if they watch me very closely, they see that I tend to react when the word of God is going on. Is it that I'm saying something, I'm talking something? You know why? Because I want the word of God to germinate in my life. So it is not about you just, you know, like just like what I said now, we don't serve a dead God. Everybody kept quiet. It doesn't move you that you serve a living God. It's something that I thought on rejoice. Or joy, the, the spirit of joy, is something that you should rejoice about. It's something that you should be joyful about. Oh, I don't serve a dead God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. If you keep quiet, let me tell you why we don't see the hand of God the way we should see it. Just because some of us are coming and we've allowed all our emotions, our thoughts, and this thing to overwhelm us. So, when we listen to the word of God, we felt the word of God will penetrate us by us just keeping quiet. You know, just like when people say, when people say I will use people here now, say, oh, the God, God is here. Let everyone be quiet. That is not how God moves. God moves by our actions. When, when a movement is coming in, let me, tell you, let me give you an example of a storm. If you want to help yourself when the wave is coming, you go in the direction of the wave. If you try to go against the direction of the wave, you will find yourself underneath the water. So when God is moving, you go in the direction of God. You talk, you react. Don't let people say, oh, your own is too much. Your own is not too much. You know, just like I said it one time, that the way to manifest the power of God is by talking, and is by talking in boldly. And you will say it, it will look like you are arrogant, you are proud. Just imagine here now, I, someone stepping now, maybe, obvious, maybe the person is not even a pastor, I said, I come in the power of God and in the spirit of God. So I said, oh, it is God that will use me. Listen, but you see, if you watch many preachers, they'll tell you, I come in the power of God. The, the most pastor or the, the pastor that you seems 
or seems to be more humble. When they talk, you see what people think is, a, is an element of pride in it. But it's not actually pride. You can't see God being manifested in your life, keeping quiet. Talk. You react. God said, I will do something in your life. You rejoice about it. Yes, I'm not talk, talking down the place of prayer, but you rejoice about it. You make bold of it like you believe it. So we are talking about the school of prayer. And I'll just touch some, because there are many aspects to prayers. There are many aspects. On Wednesday, we learned about fervency in prayer, which is more important. But I'll try and touch some other parts, then I'll just pick some little, little, little things there and we'll, we'll pray. The number one thing I want to talk about is the leading of God in prayer. The leading of God in prayer. Let me tell you this. It's so important that you investigate your thoughts in the place of prayer. You investigate your thoughts. You give it, you give it attention that it needs. You focus on it. Sometimes it will seem like it is your thoughts that is coming to you. It will seem like, no, this thing, uh, maybe I thought about it a few days ago. Let me say this. I didn't plan to say this, but it happens anyway. Just today, we didn't sleep. Our eyes are open. You know what that means. I was outside all throughout the night. But the good news is, he didn't come to my house. And I was telling one of my neighbors, I said, God is the one protecting us. I said, it's, you know it's, o- it's so obvious that the first thing they will penetrate is our house. And the house they went to, I don't even understand. It can't be compared to our, our ours. But I'll tell you what happened. Some days back, I've been having these thoughts. You know, while I'm praying, I'll have these thoughts. Teeth come, you know. And sometimes it will not add up. Just imagine, thief, come, thief, come. And you'll be like, what is the meaning of this? But when you sit down to investigate it and say, okay, for example, let's not even use the situation that happened today. When you sit down to say, oh, I'm having a thought, cheer, cheer, cheer. And like, what is the meaning of this cheer? Oh, what should I do? Let me investigate it. What does this chair stand for? Because most of the time, when we pray long, when we pray well, it seems like nothing happened. And you know, in this part of the world, we tell ourselves, let's keep praying. But God might have spoken. And most of the time, he does speak. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13 from verse 1. Can we have it on the screen fast, please? Acts chapter 13 from verse 1. All right. He said, now they were in the church that was in Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Ninja, a Lucius Senian, man in which I had been brought up with Herod the Teresh, and so as soon now. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work wherein I have called them. Stop there. As they ministered to the Lord. As they ministered to the Lord, the Holy Ghost said something. They could pick. And sometimes, picking it might be tiny. They could pick it. Because prayer is not prayer until you are able to receive something. And that's why some people said, push. 
Prayer until something happens. Prayer is not just prayer. Prayer is not just, I just want to talk. I just want to talk to a supreme God. And him not giving me answer is okay. If he doesn't give me answer, at least I've spoken to him. They said we should pray often and I've prayed. That is not what prayer is for. In the place of fellowship, there is communication. Information are being passed. Or I'm going to have fellowship with God, with Trinity. And as we oh, take caution of this place. This place, be conscious of it. Go and do this thing. That is what prayer is for. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. I know you know that scripture, but let's read it. All right, everyone read for me one to go. What did he say? Call unto me. So each time I call unto God, he said, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things that you don't know. You know, years ago, I learned this scripture. I use it often. That when I go to the place of prayer, I'm very sure that he will answer me. He will talk to me. He will tell me things I don't know. Things that I think I know, but I don't know. He said, call unto me. And I will answer this. That's the first mindset you should have when you go to the place of prayer. When I call on God, he will answer. You know what Paul said? He said he has not given us the spirit of bondage, but he has given us the spirit of ad- adoption where we could cry, Abba, Father. There is no little child. And I'm using little because in the sight of every pray- parent, no matter how grown up you are, you are still little. There is no little child that will cry out, cry in fear or in danger, that the parents will not respond. Think about it for a second. That you being a natural and you have a little tendency of being evil, your children can cry out. And you say, what is that? What is happening there? And God said, call on to me. I will answer you. I will show you great things. Great things that I don't know. The book of Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1. All right, let's read. It said, I will stand upon my watch and set, set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what it will say unto me and what I will answer when I'm reproved. Pay attention. He said, I will stand upon my watch. Now, I'm ready. I stood up. I want to pray. And I will set me upon the tower. And I will watch to see what he will do, what he will say. Two things. I will see and I will hear. So in the place of prayer, seeing and hearing is important. What did I say? Seeing and hearing is important. Because sometimes you will not hear. You will only see. And what you see, don't just neglect it. Don't just say it's not important. Oh, this thing. No. And that is why you need to train your spirits to know how to pick signals. When you watch too much of Nigerian movie, when you are going to pray, you know what you will see? That is what you are going to see. That is why this Bible is important. Read it often. Let me tell you a story. How I came into ministry. You know, I said it. I came into ministry, or I came to know I will go into ministry by or through prayer. And, um, you know, I remember I was praying every night, three hours from 12 to 3, and one day I lay down on the bed because I don't want to sleep too much, so I slept on the edge of the bed. Like if I roll, I might fall down, so I'll, I'll wake up. Because I still want to go and pray with some of my friends. So I, I, I lay down there and I kept hearing. 
Did I even say it? I kept hearing a scripture from Isaiah. And I've not studied the book of it. I don't even know where it is. Let me tell you something. So I kept hearing it. And that word seems unknown now. You will give judgment to the Gentiles. You will give judgment to the Gentiles. So I said to myself, God, your word says, that shall not judge. Praise the Lord. You know, it's so funny. I was, I was rebooking what the Lord was telling me. So one day, I was studying. And you know, then, then, I used to do it sometimes. I just feel like opening scripture. Anyone, I just say, I'll read Isaiah today. Isaiah 30. I'll read Isaiah 30, 31, 32. I don't do that any longer. I just put, pick a battle book of um, this, and that's what you should do. Sometimes I just say, okay, I want to read Isaiah all through uh, the book of Isaiah this week, or maybe I want to read Mark or Matthew this week. That's what I do. But then that's what I, I just, so I, I was reading and I stumbled on the page. And I started reading, and I'm like, this is what God told me. Just imagine that I didn't study my Bible. I will have rebooked what God has said to me. And it might take me a longer time to be aware of what God wants to do in my life. So we are talking about the leading of God. Everywhere prayer is being mentioned that people pray, God always speaks. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. From verse 1. All right, please read for me. We want to go. Verse 2. Please read like you have energy. Amen. Start again. Verse 2. And do what? Verse 3 now. Stop. I want to show you something. But I want to be fast with it. Acts 3 verse 1. I'll quickly read. Now Peter and John went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. So it's the hour of prayer. But he saw something. He saw something. This man always prayed, even though he wasn't born again. But at the ninth hour of prayer, he saw a vision. Why am I saying all these things? Because most of the time, we focus too much on what we want to say to God. And we are not focusing on what God wants to say to us. Hallelujah. We are, see, in the place of talking, you can still see things. So it's not about keeping quiet. Sometimes in the process, you might need to keep quiet and listen very well and continue praying. Because sometimes it's not just for you to just say, oh, I've had God speak. And you close your Bible and say, me, I'm done. If you like, pray five hours. But you keep on. Because there are more information that can be passed in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. This is the benefit of prayer. A man that cannot pray has shutting himself from the leading of God. A man that cannot pray has shutting himself from the leading of God. I'm not saying God cannot lead you, but I'm saying you have reduced the leading of God in your life. Because what prayer does is that it builds up your spirit so that you can tune in your frequency in the direction of God, in the wave of God. So today, as we pray, pay attention. Pay attention to the details coming to your spirit. Pay attention to those tiny still voice. It might even be some thoughts that you had some days ago. And as you think about, oh, oh, why is this thing coming back to me while I'm praying? Why is this thing coming back to me? And you know something beautiful about God is that as you pray well and as you pray long, you will get details and you will know that this one is coming from God. You might not quickly get it, but as you pray, as you continue praying. You know, I, th- I told you about the first Sunday while we were praying that I had Zerubbabel. And I will, as I was trying to ignore it, like, oh, Zerubbabel, okay. 
But it kept coming. And I said, okay, let me pay attention to it. So as I pay attention to it, I wrote it down. You know what happened? The thought left. I knew if I didn't focus on it, it won't leave. Because I was, I'm in the place of prayer. And that's what the thought does to you. In the place of prayer, even if you don't want to, it will still keep coming. Because you are in a place of supernatural atmosphere. So it will keep, still keep coming until you are able to pick it. And that's the beauty of our God. It's not just a God that, that, that will act like Google, uh, Google map. I'll tell you, 30 minutes drive, turn left. And it won't talk again until you turn, until you turn left. Until you get to that place and you turn left. But God will keep telling you, 30 minutes drive, turn left. 30 minutes drive, turn left. And when you're about to get to the place, and you tune in your atmosphere very well, your frequency very well, you're in the place of prayer, turn left. You miss the road, go back. Hallelujah. The second thing I want to talk about is in the place of prayer, there is supernatural intervention. In the place of prayer, there is supernatural intervention. The book of Esther, I guess chapter 4. Or oh, before we go there, no, okay, let's go there. Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Please read for me. I didn't say Ezra, I said Esther. All right, please read. I know it's tiny, but pardon me if you can see it. If you can't see it, be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right, go to chapter 5, verse 1. The we just read that. Okay, let's stop. Just hold on. Let's stop. You know the story, right? How it went in. The first thing for that happened also that, that will happen as we pray today is that there will be favor. So the man, the, 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 the queen, go to the king, and as he got there, the king scratched his staff and said, what do you want? Even to the half of my kingdom, the power of prayer. He said, what do you want? Even to the half of my kingdom, I'll give to you. That is what prayer does. What you don't deserve, prayer bring it to you. He said, what do you want? He said, ah, I only have one request, come. The next day he said, see, what do you want? Name them. To the half of my kingdom, I'm giving it to you. And the queen said, ah, he's just one man who wants to describe my people. He said, what? Ah, see, what prayer cannot do does not exist. I know it's God. We have said what God cannot do does not exist. I agree. But what prayer cannot do does not exist. Changes situations. Rewrite the story of a man. This is, let me tell you, I, I said it one day, I, I think I was talking to my wife, and I said, just picture it in your head. Sometimes we have not sit down to think and think through about scriptures. Elijah was a man subject to like passion like we are. So he has the same feeling, he has blood flowing through his veins. But what does the scripture say? He prayed. And the old Samaria, Israel, were suffering for lack of water. For three years. Ah! A man. I didn't, wait. Now we want to pray together. Think about it. That we are many. And we want to pray together. But just a man standing. Take it, take it, take it. It will rain for three and a half years. I can't get over that scripture. So a man can stand in now and say, oh, in this nation, I want to change the course of events. And he said, okay, how do I start? It will rain in Nigeria for three and a half years. Do you know what went on? People were killing this thing because when there is no rain, there is no food. Abi, agriculturists, if there's no rain, there's no food. 
even cattles will die. Because the water I should give cattles, I'll drink it first. I have to survive. Think about it. And when it was, so it is not about the climate, climate change. It's about a man that said, oh, okay, now three and a half years is, is done, Abi. Let me, let us bring him back. And he went, take it, Alaba. We are going to check. And he said, no, I heard the sound of abundance of rain. King, go, because rain will fall. And before the king could get to the palace, the rain starts falling. Picture it in your mind. As I'm talking to you right now, just think about it. How much more when we gather together like this? When we gather to say, let us pray. Things can change. The miracles can be built. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. You know that scripture. I'm trying to be, to, fa- to be fast. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Please open. Please read for me. One to go. Verse 2. Wait. I know you know the scripture. We're still going to read. But you know, like, he killed someone. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Everybody was cool. God has said, we'll see. Someone said something, and I quite agree with you. There is a dif- there is a difference between patience and delay. Do you agree? There is a big difference between you are patient for something and you have delay to something. Sometimes it is delay, and we are saying, "Oh, we need to be patient." And that is why, when you are praying, you need to have your discernment on. Go ahead, verse three. Please read boldly, please. Hallelujah. What's going on now? I want to go. Verse 4. Wait, we'll go to verse 5. As you are reading, don't just read and say, Pastor asked me to read. Pay attention to, to details. All right? Verse 5. Prayer was made. How? How? Without season. Verse 6. Verse 7. Verse 8. Verse 9. Let's stop there. Let me tell you something. It's possible. Some things are possible. If the God of the Bible is still God, some things are possible. Don't think limitation in your mind. If the God of the Bible is still the God that we are serving today, some things are possible. So they can kidnap me and I can walk out free. By the ministry of angels. Hallelujah. They can ayakapatele. You, you know what Elisha said? When they came to arrest him, he said, he, he was so bold that when the his servant was scared and said, Ah, my ah, there are so many. I said, he said, You don't know that they that are with us are more than they are with them. I said, God, open it. He prayed, open his eyes, and he saw God. Angels, all of angels. And he said, well, he said, angels blindfold them. And that's what happened. You know what I'm doing? I'm trying to open your mind to the possibility of what prayer can do. That men of prayer are men of the supernatural. That they command the supernatural cheaply. That is what prayer can do. We know Elijah to be man of prayer. Look at what he had done. I want you to be angry in your spirit. Says some situations have to change. I have to step into some certain realms. Operate in the dimension of God. In Acts chapter 16, the Bible says from verse 25, as Paul and Silas were praying and singing into God, there, there was an earthquake. The earthquake opened all the, the prison door that the soldiers felt, ah, my own is doomed. Think about it. Don't just say prayer is prayer. Prayer can change, cause a change in my life. It can cause a change in my vicinity. That by the instrument of prayer, I can cause a change in the territory. I've said this before. One time I was living somewhere. And because they didn't come over to meet me. 
You know, you know, I'm still a woman being sometimes I feel tired, I can't pray at night, you go to bed and sleep. But this woman told her husband, he said, Go and meet that man. His prayer is disturbing me. And I said, Is it all the time I pray? And if you know me, it's only in the morning I pray loud and, and I shout. In, at night, I don't shout. He said, it's, See, that is what prayer can do. Let me tell you this. The day I got to that house, they were having their meetings. I slept like a baby, like see if he doesn't consign me. Because that's, see, they can't come close. Hallelujah. So as you pray today, my eyes are open. My ears are open. I have supernatural intervention. I have favor. I have miracles. So I'm not just going to say by mouth, oh, I have miracle. I have the understanding that everyone that comes together to pray has something to show for it. So today, I will have something to show for it. So are you ready to pray this morning? Are you ready to pray? Let me tell you, don't just pray and say, oh, we, I know this month we are praying long. No. That at the end of today, one, my prayer life, or at the end of this month, my prayer life must, must catch fire. I must wake up in the morning to, to be able to pray long. I must wake up in the morning to, to that the hunger in my heart is to have fellowship with God. See, some things are possible. When you pray, some things, you won't fall into some certain ditch. I'm a product of it. You know, my shoulder was high today when I was talking. We were talking to my mother-in-law this morning. And my wife was telling my mother-in-law that, ah, look at what happened you know, where my husband saw, at, you know, at that stage, I'm not a pastor. My husband saw the fire accident and everything. In my mind, I'm like, ah, Sherry, that's, that's the pen of, of, being, of being able to see, not being able, you know, this is not even about being a pastor. Being able to see. Hallelujah. Please rise up to your feet. Don't be scared. So I will pray long. I will pray about this thing. So, now, we are only going to be praying in tongues. And as we pray in tongues, things will happen. Things will happen. See, prayer can move me from zero to 100. Uh, prayerlessness can move me from 100 to zero. So as you are praying now, things begin to happen. Go ahead and begin to pray right now. The disciple approached him and said, teach us how to pray. Just like John Hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah.